What Milankovitch Cycles Will Do to Earth The Milankovitch Cycles are the driving force behind ice ages, climate shifts, and habitability of planets. Milankovitch Cycles are periodic changes in the orbital characteristics of a planet that control how much sunlight it receives, thus affecting its climate and habitability over hundreds of thousands of years. Although Milankovitch Cycles have nothing to do with the current climate change, they are believed to have dictated Earth's climate for millions of years, making the planet swing periodically between tens to hundreds of thousands of years long ice ages and warmer periods called interglacials such as the one we live in. Today, scientists can model Earth's Milankovitch Cycles millions of years into the past and future and compare their calculations with evidence found in geological sediments all over the world. What drives the Milankovitch Cycles? The amount of sunlight that reaches the outer atmosphere of our planet depends on three parameters. The tilt of Earth's axis towards the plane in which the planet orbits, the eccentricity of its orbit, how elliptical the orbit is, and the so-called precession of the planet's axis as the Earth spins, its axis slightly wobbles pointing in different directions over time, like a spinning toy top. These parameters are influenced by the gravitational forces of other planets in the solar system, the pull of the Sun as well as Earth's moon. Each of these parameters changes with a different frequency, but since astronomers know the orbit of our planet and its neighbors with great precision, they can calculate the Milankovitch cycles hundreds of millions of years into the past as well as into the future. Orbital Eccentricity among the planets of the solar system, Earth's orbit is among the most circular. However, this has not always been the case and it will change again in the future. These changes are mostly driven by the gravitational pull of Jupiter and Saturn, according to NASA, and affect the length of our seasons. With a nearly circular orbit, the length of the seasons is about equal, but as the orbit becomes more elliptical, the length of the seasons will start to vary. Over long periods of time, this can trigger profound climate changes. The total change in global annual isolation due to the eccentricity cycle is very small, Alberto Maliverno, a geophysics professor at Columbia University in New York, told Space.com. It is a very minor factor in annual seasonal climate variations, but it starts making difference over long time scales. Currently, Earth reaches its closest point to the Sun, the so-called perihelion in early January during the Southern Hemisphere's summer, and the aphelion, the farthest point from the Sun, in early July. The difference in the distance of the planet to the star in those two points is about 3.2 million miles, 5.1 million kilometers, according to NASA, which is only about 3.5% of the average Sun to Earth distance. As a result, 6.8% more sunlight hits Earth's atmosphere every January than it does each July, but the short term effect on climate is negligible. However, when the planet's orbit reaches the most elliptical stage about 100,000 years from now, that difference will result in 23% more sunlight reaching Earth's atmosphere around perihelion, NASA said. Over time, this difference could trigger profound changes in Earth's climate. Changes to the tilt of Earth's axis, obliquity. Our planet spins on an axis that is tilted toward the orbital plane. Currently, this tilt, also called obliquity, deviates by 23.4 degrees from what would be a 90-degree angle toward the orbital plane. But this obliquity oscillates over time. Over the last million years, it has been swinging from 22.1 degrees to 24.5 degrees, according to NASA. During more tilted periods, the seasons on Earth get more extreme. As each hemisphere receives more sunlight in summer when it's tilted toward the sun and less in winter when it's tilted away. Over time, the longer winters lead to the expansion of polar ice caps and continental ice sheets. At the peak of ice ages, most of Earth's land could be covered in ice, the planet turning into an inhospitable snowball. These swings of tilt of Earth's axis happen about every 40,000 years, said Maliverno. As Earth spins, its axis wobbles in a circle. This effect is called actual precession. As a result, in our era, the axis points in the north toward the star Polaris, which is known as the North Star. But in a few thousand years, it will point to the star Kochab in the constellation Little Dipper, according to NASA. It takes 25,772 years for the axis to complete a full circle. Axial precession makes seasonal contrasts more extreme in one hemisphere and less extreme in the other, NASA said. This effect combines with the precession of the planet's orbit. Essentially, not just the axis of Earth's rotation wobbles, but so does the whole plane in which the planet travels around the Sun. 
As a result, the closest and farthest points of the planet's orbit to the star are not fixed but move over time. Right now, perihelion happens during the southern summer, but in about 13,000 years, it will be the northern hemisphere that will be closer to the star in the summer months. Milankovitch Cycles and Earth's Ice Ages The most significant proof that Milankovitch Cycles dictate Earth's climate is the fact that the astronomical calculations match what geologists see when they date layers of sediments found in areas which in the past formed the bed of the ocean. We know that the Milankovitch Cycles affected glaciation because we can see that clearly in geological records said Malibarno. At the bottom of the oceans, there is always some sediment that slowly deposits. When you have a period when it rains more, for example, because of changes in the global circulation, there will be more erosion and more sediment of a certain type. When the climate becomes drier, you will get a different type of sediment. That's how these sediments record climate change. Thanks to such excavation, scientists know that in the past 2.4 billion years, Earth experienced at least five major ice ages, according to Utah Geological Survey. The last ice age peaked about 20,000 years ago during the Pleistocene Epoch, a period that lasted from 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago. At the height of the last ice age, as woolly mammoths roamed vast ice sheets covering North America and Eurasia, global temperatures were about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, colder than today. Do Milankovitch cycles have anything to do with the current climate change? Climate change deniers like to argue that our planet would warm up no matter what, even without the greenhouse gas emissions that humankind is releasing into Earth's atmosphere. Malaverna, however, says that the geological record doesn't suggest that this would be the case. There have been several campaigns in the past when researchers drilled into the Antarctic ice sheets and took samples from deep below the surface, reaching layers that are up to 800,000 years old. Malaverno said they analyzed the concentrations of carbon dioxide trapped in those layers. There are tiny air bubbles in the ice, essentially samples of the atmosphere as it was back then, and they found that even during the interglacials, the maximum amount of carbon dioxide was nowhere near the amount that we see today. When will be the next ice age? Still, even without the current man-made climate change, the planet would be set for some serious climate havoc at some point in the future. That point in time, however, would it come for tens of thousands of years. The next ice age, Malaverna said, could be expected about 50,000 years from now. But what happens with the climate in the next decades might set us up for a much earlier climate mayhem. In the last 10,000 years ago, we have had an amazingly constant climate, said Malaverno. Agriculture could only start during the interglacial. That's when human civilization flourished. But we're messing with the climate and really changing this very even plateau that we have enjoyed for the last few millennia, Malaverno said. What does the moon have to do with Earth's Milankovitch cycles? The Earth's climate would likely be far less friendly if it weren't for the planet's large moon. Some scientists think that without the moon, life on Earth may not be possible at all. This theory was put forward by astrobiologist Peter Ward and evolutionary biologist Donald Brown in their book Rare Earth, published in 2000. The two postulate that the large and massive moon creates torque on Earth's equatorial bulge, the widening of the planet around the equator, which stabilizes the precession of the planet's axis.